Um, I just want to apologize if you hear noise in the background. I've told every member of my family to shut their mouths because I'm recording and I have a mic so it actually picks up sound and they still seem to think that they are like not being loud or they're far enough away that the mic's not going to pick it up. We live in a tiny house. Mic picks up everything no matter where you are. So anyways, that's just sorry. I'm, I, <laughs> I'm trying so hard. I'm trying really hard, I promise. But all that I could do today was cuddle my dog and cry. Anyways, this treatment is based off of a 12 minute distance test. So it's pretty self-explanatory. You go for 12 minutes and you measure the distance that you get in 12 minutes. You're also measuring your heart rate and he needed that for some sort of calculation that he did. I didn't ask for all the details because I'm past that point of caring. The measurement that my specialist is getting is called a VO2. What is a VO2? VO2 max. Let me just... This, the, these are his words, so not me. It's a measurement of the maximum O2 consumption your body can consume when you are working at your maximal effort. It's an estimate of fitness, strong predictor of many things, including mortality, own overall, overall health. Oh my gosh, can't read. And VO2, the actual like VO2, stands for the amount of oxygen, O2, that your body can consume in milliliters is measured as a function. <laughs> I don't know what this is saying. If you really want to try and figure this out, you pause and you read it. But anyways, as for the actual test, he said, I did it at home. He asked me if I wanted to go into Toronto to do it and I was like, no sir, I don't want to be anywhere near that city. So I did it at home on my own treadmill. Um, he just said to be careful and make sure that you don't increase your symptoms over three points, same as the buffalo test. Um, you can increase and decrease your speed during the 12 minutes as much as you need to, so you don't need to be going the same speed the entire time. So, you know, if you need to basically be like, almost stand still, <laughs> do it. I didn't, I didn't have to do that, but anyways. There was kind of more flexibility that way with the 12 minute distance test. So I did the test and I sent him how far I got and I had my polar so that I could measure my heart rate. And so he was able to see what my average heart rate was during the 12 minutes and also what my maximum heart rate got to. And with all of that information, he was able to calculate my VO2, which was 14.8 milliliters per kilograms per minute. And again, if you want to know what that means, go back and read his explanation and see if it makes any sense to you, because it doesn't to me. But anyways, something I did understand is that my VO2 max is about 50% of the average female who is my age. So what my specialist wanted me to get from those results is just to like really understand and and realize how much of a stressor exercise and activity is on my body. Before my injury, I was at least average in my fitness not to be not to be cocky but maybe i was a little bit above and so i'm at least 50 percent lower with my capacity to do things 
physically than I was before my injury. And this is after almost three years of healing and of getting better. And so, even though I've made a lot of progress, I'm still very far from what I was before the injury. And I need to re recognize that and be patient with myself with that knowledge in mind. So another part of the new treatment was to really look at my diet and supplement intake. He was focusing particularly on my protein intake and then also just recommended the supplements that he wanted me to be taking. I already take omega-3, vitamin D, and magnesium. He wanted me to add, oh, did I write it down? Add this one, which I'd never heard of, and also creatine, so I'm basically a gym bro. What's up? Oh. I'm sorry, mentally I'm just already gone, so I apologize for the things that I do in this video. Yes, I am taking creatine, so... Yeah. Then I had to give him over an average of like a week what my protein intake was. And he was like, that's horrible. You need to double it. <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> okay. Okay. The new treatment exercise plan was still five days a week, which at first I was like, no. Then he was like, three days is 30 minutes, but I have a range of a target heart rate and it's like a range of 20. So on days when I'm not feeling so well, I'm just letting myself be in the lower range of the target heart rate and on days when I feel I can push myself a little bit more, I go higher. No, it's 30. Yeah, the range is 30, so it's a big range. And so I kind of got freaked out about the 30 minutes as well, because that's like way longer than what I was doing before. I was doing 10 minutes before. <laughs> 30 minutes within the range of the target heart rate. And that's three times a day. And then two times, three times a week, two times a week, I have to do what he calls exercise snacks, which I think is just really funny. But um, it's 20 seconds of as intense exercise as you can do. So like stairs or like, I don't know. Brief high intensity training. You're trying you're trying to be as intense as possible, but just for 20 seconds. And you, you do that twice a day, but you give yourself like hours of time in between the exercise snacks. Two days of intentional rest. And he told me to be selfish on those days. And also spend a, like a lot of time in those days meditating and doing mindfulness stuff. And some of the other aspects of the initial treatment, like sleep regulation and mindfulness, were brought into this treatment. So like still sleep, the rules for my sleep are still the same. And I'm still expected to be meditating at least 10 minutes a day, but hopefully more on the days when I'm intentionally resting. I'm just going to go over what my first week of treatment looked like. So let's start with the first day. Day number one. Yeah, I was super anxious because, like I said, 30 minutes felt like a huge increase from the 10 minutes. And, you know, fear of failure because all I had done up until that point was fail with my treatment plans. So, yeah, super anxious um but like 
also I have I walk my dog for 30 minutes but it's just not at a target heart rate so like I kept on reminding myself like you've done 30 minutes since your concussion so like you can do it you'll be fine um as you can see from the video exercises went shockingly well I was feeling good after I had like no a higher level of symptoms and I was good the rest of the day it was wonderful lovely 10 out of 10 second day I was doing the exercise snacks which I just didn't bother recording but I was doing stairs I was doing the stairs and those were totally fine um, yeah they went well no higher symptoms with the exercise snacks all good third day <laughs> things were going too well so god was like let me just toss in a little just like a smidgen of flavor for your week couldn't get out of bed that was difficult um just like wasn't feeling well for no particular reason just wasn't it wasn't a good day so that was my first rest day there was no intention intentional rest it was just all bitter rest because I wasn't feeling well fourth day bounce back well I'm reading from my notes by the way because like I don't have good memory so it was bounce back day on day four I did my 30 minutes on the treadmill again but might have pushed myself too much got a little cocky from the first time so i got symptoms that lasted for a few hours but like nothing crazy <laughs> fifth day felt like i got hit by a truck <laughs> had a very intense headache was scared to get out of bed because I thought I had a migraine and I just didn't want to do anything that would make it worse intense nausea as well turns out it was just my period <laughs> just my that thing takes me out like every month so it sucks but um my other rest day but like seriously the entire day was just me trying not to throw up so not restful in any way day six <laughs> um not good <laughs> it wasn't good um I felt weak dizzy and shaky probably because I didn't eat hardly anything except for like those crackers you know the crackers that you eat when you're nauseous what are they called soda crackers anyways appetite still wasn't back to normal still struggling to eat and gain my strength again so I couldn't exercise, so that was first failure of my treatment. I only lasted five days. The seventh day, slightly better, but not really. Um, I got a severe headache for half of the day. I tried walking my dog, I got super dizzy and nauseous so I didn't do exercises. That is kind of my little update of where I'm at right now. I want to record and kind of let you guys follow me through this new treatment plan because I want to show how much work recovery is and also normalize that recovery doesn't go smoothly like this has been three years of basically treatment plan after treatment plan and f having a couple good days and then being hit by a truck you know this is the reality and it's really frustrating but it's something that everybody goes through and yet like we all expect that it's not gonna be me going through it and so I just want to normalize it and I also want to show you guys the process so maybe you understand what somebody with post-concussion syndrome is going through 
more clearly instead of being like, why aren't they getting better yet? Because I think before I had PCS, I would look at people and be like, concussions don't last that long. Like, what do you mean you're not better yet? I'm going to try and record <clears throat> like a month in another week and show you guys progress that's been made, if any. By the time that I'm recording this video, it's almost been a month. <laughs> I won't give any spoilers. You'll have to watch my next video, but you got two in one with this one, so like calm down. Don't be greedy. To finish off my video, you didn't get one in the first part, but that's because I never planned on it being a two-parter, so you're getting one song recommendation, even though it's two videos. Suck it up. Um, I don't even know if people enjoy these, but I'm gonna keep doing it <laughs> for my own happiness. So, song recommendation for today um, is a song called In Repair by John Mayer. I know. I'm a Swifty, and I'm recommending John Mayer. This song has kind of a nice balance of, like, what did I say? It has a comforting balance of like accepting one's brokenness and also still having hope that things will get better. And I think that's the kind of attitude that you have to have when you are starting treatment or a new treatment or whatever. There has to still be acceptance that like, yeah, I'm not better yet. And you have to be patient with yourself and okay when you still have bad days. But then there needs to be hope that like there is potential for things to get better. You know? So this song has comforted me several times. Hopefully it comforts you. Um and I'll see you next time. Too many shadows in my room. Um, I was super. Was this is. No, what? Until. Please, before you shoot me. I don't. I don't actually know. I don't have anything. Um, meh. You can shoot me if you want. <laughs>